Welcome to the Creator Case Study, a podcast where I sit down with successful content creators to discuss their successes and help you improve your content creation and growth strategies. Today is part one of two of my interview with John Prosser, the host of the Front Page Tech YouTube channel, which has been making some massive waves in the tech news arena. There is just so much useful information in today's episode, so I'm going to urge you to go grab a pen, a pad of paper, and take some notes because we talk about a bunch of content creation strategies, growth strategies, how to stay motivated, and everything that's necessary to create a successful YouTube channel. In tomorrow's episode, we do get a little bit more inside baseball where we dive into the YouTube algorithm and everything that revolves around that. So if that sounds interesting, make sure to check back tomorrow. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into my chat with John Prosser, the host of the Front Page Tech YouTube channel. So, John, thank you very much for being here. How you doing? Dude, thanks for having me. It's crazy because I'm pretty sure I've watched you longer than you've watched anything I've made. That that may be true, and I apologize. I should have been watching you from the, <laughs> from back in the day. It's a bit uh, I'm lopsided. I'm a lurker, man. I'm a lurker. <laughs> I just, like, I, I watch people and I rarely comment. Maybe, maybe less so nowadays, especially because, like, if I comment, people will recognize the username or my name. But like, I think I've always been that way. I've just been a lurker supporting people without without telling them they have my support. So let's actually jump into some questions that I got for you. We'll start with a really important aspect of, I think, analyzing any channel. So there are plenty of channels that cover tech news. So what do you think sets your channel apart from those other people who cover the same topic area? Right. Uh, honestly. I'm funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I I think that there's uh there's more differences than that, but like I think the difference between us and literally every tech channel is our priority, if that if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I've laughed at a few tech people before. Like I think tech personalities can be funny. I've there's a lot of the people that I follow have been funny or say jokes, like a lot of them it's just a thing that they do during the the filming process, but it seems like every joke is an afterthought if that makes sense whereas the narrative of our news show is literally the priority of the jokes the comedy is it, I, honestly i th this is the biggest thing that sets us apart is we are a tech channel and i would go as far as not to just say you know tech news youtubers but tech channels in general i think what sets us apart is that the tech comes after the entertainment for us like we are a tech channel that recognizes that tech doesn't matter. The tech news that we talk about doesn't matter tomorrow, let alone next week. You know, it's not relevant. Um, so I think our goals are different in that. Like uh, with our show, my goal is to just make somebody laugh for 10 minutes. Uh, and the tech content is just my material to do that. I don't care. Like, I, I mean, I hope that you learn something in the show during the episode, but like, my goal at the end of the night is like, I want to go to bed knowing that I made tens of thousands of people laugh and that's the coolest job ever. And I think that's what sets us apart from the normal tech stuff is the fact that we're a tech channel that puts tech second. Okay. That's interesting. And I think that may have provided an answer to a question I have a little bit later where it's, why do you think you've become so successful? And it could be that the news nowadays is so incredibly depressing that <laughs> when there's an option to watch something that you care about, i.e. tech news, and then also laugh and feel better about yourself, that seems like a really good option as opposed to somebody just saying, today in the news, the iPhone or the iPad blew up. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So I mean, that's like. And I think that's because right now, especially more than ever before, content is so accessible and so consumable that half the stuff I talk about, you probably already seen in a tweet um, or a, a Verge headline or something like that. And I think that's part of the strength of what we do is recognizing that and just accepting the fact that we won't be the first to break the news stories. We're not journalists. It's not a real tech news show. We're just adding context. I like to call myself a tech analyst over a tech journalist because I'm not doing the research. You know what I mean? I'm not going. I'm not the one breaking the stories. I'm just reading the stories 
and most of the time telling you what the next Verge article is going to be. I analyze the, the market. I've done this for a long time. I've been able to make a lot of predictions and get them right. It's not because I'm crazy fortune teller, just because I've done this for a really long time. And each company has their own patterns and each company is predictable in that way. Um, but yeah, I think that for us, it's more recognizing what we are and what we are not that has helped us be successful. So, so let me ask you this, since your show is more personality driven, has that always been apparent on your channel or is that something that you developed over time? Because when you are more personality driven or you show your true self on camera, it does open you up to the possibility of getting more personal attacks. So when you launched, yeah. were you that personality driven or humor driven or was it more of a just news aggregation? I think when we started, there was a difference between what I wanted to make and what we were actually making, if that makes sense. Like, I, it definitely was not as personality driven. Um, and I, I think I attribute that to not that we didn't know which direction to go. I honestly think I hadn't found myself yet. Like, I didn't know what kind of personality I was online. I didn't know where I fit in. And so the first few episodes of Front Page Tech are very bad. The, well, actually, the first few years of Front Page Tech are pretty bad. But like when I, I if if you somehow stumble upon the first episode, which now people are because the algorithm right now is serving up older content. Thank you, YouTube. Right. My old news show that's not relevant anymore. Uh, it's people are starting to see that first episode where I literally covered like 16 stories in one video. Uh, now it's three per episode. We have a strict uh, structure of three news stories per episode, but I covered like 16 stories and it was, it was the like generic, like this happened. Okay. Next story. This happened. Okay. Next story. The show has gone through a few changes at first. It was a lot of news and a lot of info. Um, and then that we kind of started to integrate our personalities into the show, but it went so far in the other direction that it be that the news was lost. Like, the majority of the show was just nonsense uh, and jokes like Brian, who edits the show now, my very best friend who has been with me since the beginning of Front Page Tech for a while was also in the show. He was a co-host like behind the camera. You never saw him, but he wore a mic off camera and I was obviously on camera and we had a lot of banter back and forth. And it started to get really far away from us where it became more of that and less tech news. And it's just honestly the past year where we, I've kind of finessed it and we've been able to balance both things. It's gone back and forth between like really heavy on the news and no personality to too much personality and no news. And now I think we have a pretty good balance of those things, but it took a while, honestly. So so on that note, it, it does seem like you are very strategically minded. So when you first launched, did you have this course of action for your content strategy, marketing, or growth? Or is that something that you developed as you saw what people were reacting to or responding to? Uh, this is a tough one because... When we So we started from Page Tech back in 2013. All that I knew back then was that I wanted to make content that I personally felt I was missing, like content that I would want to watch. And I, I think that's a really great direction for most people that start online. Like, absolutely. I think that's the thing that continues you through really hard struggles and really great success is just the fact that like, I mean, and I, I feel bad for a lot of YouTubers. It's sort of like, a lot of big names that like I know now that I'm friends with that honestly have a resentment for their audience or like what they've made because they they made content purely based off of what worked at the time uh, and they found success in it and they've kind of locked themselves into content that they're not really interested in. And that to me is my biggest fear, like th me getting tired of what I make before the audience gets tired of what I make is my biggest fear personally. But like that's like a really core piece of advice that I would suggest all YouTubers start out with is create content that you would want to watch because you, you'll be able to create that content, whether things are going really well or really terribly. But in 2013, man, there, there was no strategy. I mean, I had been uploading videos on and off really since 2006, I think. Um, and even in 2013, the landscape of everything was, was way different. Uh, it was probably because, 
number one, I was younger. Number two, I was really naive. Um, but I didn't know anything about content strategy, man. I just uploaded videos and hoped for the best. And I kind of missed that, honestly. Like now that th now that this is my job and I'm so addicted to the growth, the data, all the numbers, I pay attention to all this stuff. And I mean, I'm sure you get it. At, at times it's crippling to just like, even if things are going really well, it's crippling that you get so locked into those numbers. Like the, the usernames, the faces to the usernames go away and everyone's just a number. And it's hard to bring yourself back from that. Um, but, and I, I, I'm sure a lot of creators love that mentality, by the way, like just, just create stuff because you're an artist and it's beautiful and that's all great. Like I started, do, that's how I started too. But like, there's a difference. Like you can be an artist and create videos and just save them on your hard drive and be happy with that. If you're truly like an artist and you just love the art of creating. My issue is like, and this is something I'm really trying to get into creators heads now. Like, if you actually want to be seen, you can't, you don't, that's not a thing that you can do. You can, yo, I just create because it's beautiful and it's art. Like if you actually want to make it, you gotta, you gotta pay attention to the numbers, regardless of what everyone says. It's, I know it's the ugly side of things, but like, that's the truth. Um, but I, I do miss the days of this not being my job and just doing it. Like, and it wasn't even because I chose to just create. It was honestly because I was younger, naive, and I didn't know anything about content strategy or marketing. I just thought you upload a video on YouTube and walk away. That's it. You just wait. Yeah, I, I, I fell into that hole a little bit where I got a little bit too invested in the analytics. So I had to take a step back. I just, mm. I would upload and I would just walk away. I wouldn't look at my YouTube stats. I wouldn't, I deleted the YouTube studio off of my phone. I just couldn't handle it because I had begun comparing myself to other creators. And uh, that's, that's the worst. Yeah, especially since I wasn't really comparable to those other creators. I'm not making a tech news show. I'm not yeah, making right. a phone review show. So why am I comparing myself to them? And that's and that's the tough part for creators because we are the only ones doing that. You know, like the viewers aren't comparing us to anybody. We pay attention to the stuff that the viewers never pay attention to, but that's the stuff that gets like locked in our minds and we can't get past. We and that I think that's like that's another really crippling factor that we all deal with. That even when you tell yourself not to, you still you still get caught up in. You still compare yourself. Uh, I could, dude. You're, you're a crazy person. I couldn't imagine deleting the studio app. I, it's back on my phone now, but... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm addicted, but it was becoming a very let's, negative let's, addiction. Let's be sane here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, there's no YouTube creator who doesn't look at stats. I just had to take a step back. <laughs> so, like, so Are you the kind of guy that looks every hour? Occasionally. I try yeah. not to, though. I'm really great in the morning. I don't look. Like, I haven't looked yet. But at night, when we put out an episode, I just can't stop. Someone should take my phone away. Yeah, so, so I upload mine, or I schedule them for release in the morning. So in the morning, I'll check it. But when I get home from work, I, I refuse to look at it. Because that's just, no, bad news. I was, I was typically really bad in the morning. Like, if I, if I, when I first wake up, if I look at stuff when I first wake up, like my, I'm more vulnerable, I think. Like I haven't had time to build up my brick wall yet. So all the mean stuff that people say, if the numbers are disappointing, like it could ruin my whole day. So like I don't look in the morning and I wait till I'm a regular human <laughs> to look. Right. <laughs> so so <laughs> let's change gears a little bit. So as I mentioned, you've been uploading for about four years, but... I looked at your uh, social blade, and in September of 2017, you had a ridiculously good month. And then beginning yeah. in 2018, you've also seen some amazing growth. Like I mentioned, 20,000 subs in this last month. Mm -hmm. So what do you think you were doing different to gain that new audience or to gain favor from YouTube's algorithm, for lack of a better word? We admitted what needed to happen to ourselves. I think that's what I think that's what did it. We've been having this conversation a lot lately. When I say we, uh, I mean me and Brian. Um, 
because we've been seeing this a lot lately. I, I say this pretty frequently just when I'm upset in general. If I get a nasty comment or someone calls me like an Apple fanboy because I didn't because I didn't like say something nice about Android that day. But the day before I was <laughs> saying something not great about <laughs> Apple stuff. You're only as good as your last video to the most like to most people that watch your stuff. The most people that stumble on your videos like you're only as good as that last one. They think they got the whole history and people have the assumption right now especially right now in our like growth period, all the new people have this assumption that, hey, you're a news channel. People are always searching for news. It's easy for you to grow. I've been getting that a lot lately, but it literally could not be further from the truth because for years and years, and like uh, you looked at the social blade, so you know we've been doing it for a while. We did just do the news. We were the news channel. We were the ones hoping to rank and search. I always thought that. Like when I started front page tech, I was like, oh, dude, this is going to grow so fast because search is where it's at. We're always talking about relevant new stuff and uh, it's always going to be ranking and search. Like we're going to, we're going to kill it. And that just didn't happen like at all. Um, depending on search was the biggest mistake I think we've ever made. And we made that mistake for five years. Uh, back this time last year, I was working with Amazon. I was doing a TV show for them. Uh, and I was traveling a lot back and forth from New York city. Um, and that sounds great, but if I'm going to be honest, it almost, it almost ruined my life because, uh, I was making front page tech for a while. And that's the beauty of, of the internet. I'm sure you, you understand, like you literally never know who's watching. You never know what email you're getting tomorrow that could change things. Like you, you got, you got no idea. And so I was making front page tech. I think this time last year, maybe we would crack a thousand views an episode. Maybe. Uh, but Amazon reached out, they had found me and they really loved me as a host. And they were starting a new project in New York city and so I flew down and like we did test shoots and pilots and then eventually I was hired and I started working with them and the traveling back and forth was getting really, really rough and they wanted me to move to New York City. And it was getting to a point where I was sort of able to do what I love, right? I'm making content. I'm hosting the content. At least I'm being treated like a king. Like every time I went to New York City, I had a driver like I had a makeup artist like during commercial breaks. The makeup artist would come and dab my sweat off my stupid face. And like they treated me so, so great. Uh, and I started to weigh that with my own personal success. Like maybe front page tech will never make it. Maybe I won't make it on my own. Maybe I need a company like this. Maybe I need to do this instead. And so my focus started to shift away from what I was doing to what Amazon wanted me to do. And I, it, it honestly, like it, it, got really, really close to ruining my life because I wasn't actually happy. And what I thought was going to be really successful and make me really, really happy and be in New York city and be with Amazon, such a big company was actually the exact opposite of what I wanted when I started from page tech. Like the whole point of this whole thing was I didn't want a boss. I didn't want to be told what to do. <laughs> my kittens on my shoulder. Now oh, I wanted to, <laughs> I planned this, this is scripted. Um, I wanted I wanted to be in charge and just create and do my own thing. And then I, I, I like did my myself a disservice by sort of settling for the fact that, Oh, maybe front page tech won't make it. Maybe I'll be okay working for Amazon. Um, but it was this time last year where I was getting really burnt out with Amazon. Uh, they were making me talk about stuff. I really didn't care about like products, you know, Amazon's all about selling products. And it was stuff I just did not, I couldn't even pretend to care, not even for the money they were paying. And uh, one day I honestly decided, no, I'm not going to do this anymore. And it was one of the stupidest decisions I've ever made. Uh, one of the best ones, though, I, I, I'm a guy that takes a lot of risks. And I think like risks that you take, even though they, they could kill you, have also the best chance of the greatest rewards. And this was one of those moments. I turned away a, an $800,000 contract with Amazon. And wow. they, I remember they wanted me to talk about an alarm clock. And I'm looking at this alarm clock. I'm on set and I'm like, no, I, I think I'm done. And they were like, what? 
Like I, I I'll never forget the guy peeking <laughs> up from behind the camera going, what? And I'm just like, yeah, I'm done. I can't do this. Like, I don't care about this stuff. And I, this is like the opposite of what I built so far. Um, so I left. And then this time last year, Brian and I decided, let's just say, screw it, man. Let's just go all in with front page tech. He quit his job. Uh, he, he, he worked at Best Buy at the time. And so literally from making both of us zero money at that point, because we our focus had sort of shifted away from front page tech and we took almost four months off of front page tech. It was bad. Um, we jumped right back into it and said, let's just do what we always wanted to do. And so he started editing the show. Uh, we started going all in and then not even a month later was September of 2017. Um, that happened. The iPhone 10 came out or was announced at least and I really stopped targeting search results. I started targeting people instead. I made a video about the iPhone 10. Uh, a lot of people have seen it. It's got like almost a million views now. But I made a video about Apple and about the iPhone 10 at a time where people were really feeling disappointment towards Apple, like even dedicated Apple fans. So it was like a really, really greatly timed video. And a lot of people had these frustrations about this brand, about this phone. And I, I was their voice. And I think that's why it resonated with them. The video was titled, not in a way to like make it in search results. It was targeted to people and their emotions. Like I wanted to trigger an emotional response before they ever clicked on the video. The video took off. Like, I think the first night it was like, it was a normal video for us, but I woke up the next morning and it was just gone. It was away from me. And it was getting like a hundred thousand views a day. And so subscribers started coming in and I think we capitalized properly. Like we went daily at that point. Um, and then we took that similar strategy we used for that one video and we used it for front page tech. So no more search results. We did it for five years. It's boring. It doesn't work. Instead, we're going to make videos for people because search results will never click on these videos the people will. So every episode was made to trigger an emotional response. And we went daily and we were getting like a thousand, 2000 subscribers a day. And we just kept going crazy. September though, Brian and I have always considered our fluke month. And we're talking September, 2017. Um, because we grew really, really rapidly. We thought we were new. <laughs> we thought we knew what we were doing. And if you look at our social blade graphs, like you did, you see that giant spike and then just crash and burn like immediately after. And I think it's because we honestly didn't know actually what to do. Like maybe we thought we knew how to capitalize or where, what the next pivot should be, but we actually had no clue. We weren't ready for the growth so quickly. We gained 300 subscribers the month before and then immediately the next month, 16,000. And we only had like 19 or 20,000 subscribers. So we almost doubled in the, in the month. And it was insane. And for the longest time, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Brian and I have beat ourselves up over that month. Like we were so angry at ourselves that we couldn't replicate it, that it, that it felt like a fluke to us. Like it happened because of a lucky video. And we, we got most of our subscribers, not from that video. I think that video got us like four or 5,000 subscribers, but the rest came because we capitalized and they came from the videos that followed that video every day. Um, I think that's a really important note for most subscri for most uh, YouTubers. Like, you can have one lucky video, but it doesn't mean that that video is going to change your life. It was what we did after that one lucky video, but we really beat ourselves up, dude. Like, we always thought that was a fluke month that it would never happen again, and we had to be lucky to do that again. Uh, and then luck. Right now, I think probably just a tad over a month ago, just a few days over a month ago. Brian and I sat down because we we just started working really, really hard. And the growth started happening. Oh, the kitten just... Did you see that jump? I did. <laughs> that was risky. Talk about risks. That kitten just jumped <laughs> like a good three feet. But what's uh, the reward for her or him? Uh, food. Okay. <laughs> food bowls down there. Uh, so I think that... So Brian and I had the had a conversation a little over a month ago because we were we were working hard and the growth was happening steadily, um, and you can see that in our social media graphs. It was really a struggle, and we really just had it was just 
pure hard work. And we almost, almost matched our best month last month. So that fluke month that we thought we would never see again, we would never replicate. We almost matched it. Um, we, and we got like half the subscribers that we got that month, but in views, we almost matched it just by working hard. And so I have a lot of knowledge as of late about the algorithm and we, we knew what worked for our show. So Brian and I decided to do that, to just make our show. And this month we crushed our best month ever crushed it just by working hard. And that, that to me is more freeing than like any milestone that anyone will know publicly. Just the fact that, you know, for, months brian and i beat ourselves up over that one month that we thought we would never see again because we got lucky the fact that we weren't just lucky and we just did the work feels better than any you know milestone so so let me ask you this you mentioned that you've moved from being strictly a news aggregation to trying to get more of an emotional response out of your audience to get more recommendations so with your news stories, how do you go about developing or, or finding that emotional topic or emotional response for each video? And I've seen a few times where you say there's not enough news, we're not going to release an episode today. So how do you, or additionally, how do you decide, you know what, we're not going to be able to release a video that's up to our standards? Let's hold off for today. Because I think that's really important for people to understand okay, I'm not going to be up to par. Let's not release. Yeah. Um, I think that like, cause I go back and forth between advice. Uh, I, I do one thing, but I also tell creators that it's okay to just put something out there for the sake of putting it out there, especially if you're creating daily stuff like we are. Um, but specifically to our strategy right now. And normally, honestly, like I think that is okay. I do that. Like if even if we don't have uh, an emotional headline and we can't drive a specific narrative of the show, I will still make a show just for the audience, like for our subscribers, the people that are coming back every single day. Um, it's just currently right now in our current strategy that we have we decide that if we cannot put out a video that has a narrative to it, that has a story to it, that doesn't have a he that doesn't have an emotional headline and can't trigger an emotional response. We just will not put it out. Um, there's a very specific structure to front page tech. There's three stories a day, and each story has three segments to it. There's the first part of of each story is me giving you a little heads up. This is what we're about to talk about. The second part is the actual like meat of the story along with sources of the story. We're not just like making up the news. We show articles and uh, we say very specific things about the story. That's where you get the facts. And then the third, the third segment of each story is my opinion. We always end each story with my opinion or a joke, usually to make the show easily consumable. The first two stories are always throwaway. Like even if you did learn something, we could have replaced those stories with anything throughout the day. And we gather maybe 10 stories a day and only three of them get into the show. We pick two of them that even if there might be a bigger, even if we could have chosen a different story for the first two, we always choose two stories that don't take away from the last one because the last one is where I'm going to win people over. That's uh, there's a very specific strategy with each episode. Now the first two stories are just kind of like throwaway to get you calmed down. Uh, cause it's, uh, there's a lot of jokes in the first, the first half of the show. And that's like, I, I really want to hammer in your head immediately off the bat. This is not what you're used to watching. That's the important part of the first two stories. Those are their goal. Like each story of the show carries a goal for me. Like, I think that's, I think that's another thing that sets us apart is I think I use the content to set me up for success. And then the third story is the emotional, the thing that triggers that response from the viewer. And that's where I get really opinionated. So the first two stories are throwaway. It's all jokes. The, the last part of the show is where I make my own credibility known. Like, not I, maybe I will make a joke. Maybe I'll go crazy and rant and yell and set myself apart from other people right off, right off the bat with that last story. But the last story is always the one that I dive deeper into. If you watch the episodes, most... Most of the time, that last story 
is the same length it took me to go through two stories in the beginning. It's the whole last half of the show. Um, and that's that's really the point of the show is to work up to the narrative of the last story and be able to give an opinion that will trigger an emotional response, whether it's something that you wanted to say or that you really believe and think, or whether you completely disagree with me, the goal is to create the conversation. Uh, and, and, and that's something I didn't have for a while. I was very afraid. I, I always played it safe. Um, cause I was afraid of just like even hurting one person or hurting the feelings of one person or having one person disagree with me. And I know that's, <laughs> that sounds ridiculous cause you shouldn't be your feelings shouldn't be hurt over something that some idiot said on a tech news show. But that's that I think that happens with every niche, the tech niche. Everyone is very, very passionate and they know what they want and they need their opinions validated. And I just decided to be not that guy. I don't want to validate your opinion. Uh, I want to present a different one. So that that's really the 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 goal and the narrative, the strategy for each episode. But it took us keep in mind, it took us five and a half years to th- to have this thought out to like recognize what we what we were supposed to be doing. Yeah, that that was exactly where I was actually going to take you. I was going to ask you if you saw the current amount of success that you have or or I should say the current number of views when you first launched, do you think you would have been able to see the potential or do you think it would have just been another fluke month? <sighs> so Brian and I had this conversation very, very recently because uh, I don't, we don't have to get into it, but like a month ago, actually pretty re- pretty recently, the, not this month has been a, a lot better, but for a second there, the growth was getting too far ahead of me. Like the growth was happening faster than I was personally prepared. Like I wasn't ready for all the attention and I was still engaging as if we were a smaller channel and we didn't have that attention, if that makes sense. Like, right. Yeah. I was saying too many things publicly that I probably didn't need to say. I was arguing with too many people, giving like too many haters attention when it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, no one knows that I replied to that one guy that said that one mean thing. <laughs> uh, no one knows that stuff. And I think I struggled with that for, I, I still do, honestly, that the growth has happened so quickly that I personally, Brian too, we haven't had time as people, as humans to prepare for that attention. And I think that's the only downside to this is that, you know, it's really great to see the numbers just skyrocketing, but also while you're doing that, you're not giving yourself enough time to actually understand and adjust to what's happening, that these are actual human beings. It's not just a number and that, those people are in my life every day now. That's something that uh, Brian and I talk about now is like, would we be, are we happy with the way it happened? Like, are we happy with all this quote unquote success in a short amount of time? Or would we have been happier if over the five years or five and a half years, this was spread out. So we got little tastes of victory every now and again. Like I wonder if we would have been happy then and we wouldn't have like struggled so much, but honestly, I don't think I would change it, dude. Like I, this is, this is a thing that I think a lot of creators don't really recognize in themselves is they, they have a hard time admitting how they, how they feel. Um, and just the, the human side of things gets taken out. And I don't think a lot of creators would admit this, but like, I am very happy with the way things went and I wouldn't change it. Like, I don't think we were ready and I'm okay with admitting that. I don't think our show was developed enough. I don't think our, hell, I don't think our personalities were developed enough. And even if we did land a lucky video, we wouldn't have known what to do with it. It I think it required this experience uh, to be able to capitalize on, growth when it happens because i don't think if we did land a lucky video here and there i don't think we would have been able to pull anything off i don't think we would have been able to maintain growth uh i just don't think we were ready i'm proud of what i make now uh right now i'm proud of what i make i don't think i i think every creator i was the same way where you 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 think your content is fantastic uh and you just (laughs) need the right people to see and i thought that way for a very long time 
And looking back, I could I can't say that I'm proud of the content. Uh, anything older than a year, but uh, but I think I think it's important to know that you may not look back on those videos as something that you have pride in, but those videos were essential to get where you're oh, at yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, we've made over a thousand videos. A lot of the, a lot of the stuff is private. Uh, there's 725 episodes of Front Page Tech, I think, but a thousand videos just on that channel overall. Like I said, I've made YouTube videos for longer, um, but I think I have greater pride now that the growth happened right now because I'm proud of the content that we make right now. And I'm glad the bulk of people that know who that know who we are and who found us found us during our prime. I think right now uh, we're making really good stuff and I'm proud that people are finding us now rather than, you know, years ago. I, I know that we probably would have enjoyed small victories here and there throughout the years, but I don't, I, I think we needed that. I think we needed to struggle uh, to, to actually like, understand what you know the success we have now i think we needed to struggle before to to really wrap our heads around what's happening now and be grateful for it so you constantly hear creators smaller creators saying i'm not getting the growth i want so i'm just gonna quit and (laughs) it seems like the the years of grinding and learning and improving is essential to really be ready for that success so how did you I get not not necessarily cope, but how did you stay motivated over those years where you weren't necessarily getting a small victory here and a small victory there? It was more of just really a long grind yeah. to prepare for the success. What did you do to stay motivated? I made a show that I thought was good. That's really it. Uh, I made a show that I thought was good, whether a hundred people watched it or a thousand people watched it. Uh, and honestly, like, I think that is the thing that has kept us going for so long is that we always just made the show that we would want to watch, even if it wasn't good. Like, you know, at the time, at the time, it was good. That's and I think that's all that matters. And I think that a lot of a lot of uh, creators might get disappointed and a lot of them do quit. Uh, but I think those are the people that didn't just enjoy creating. They they were creating for some sort of r- reward. Like they needed they needed gratification. They needed appreciation. They needed something, uh, and they weren't getting it. Everyone has their own goals, but I think inevitably, if you don't create content that you wanted to make, you will burnt out, uh, or you will burn out, not burnt out. Uh, you you will burn out, whether it's because no one's watching and that's really like disheartening for you or you burn out because even if you are successful, you created something, you you literally created a monster. You created something you didn't want to make and you got stuck doing that. Interesting. So I I think that's absolutely right there. It's, it's goes back to what you said at the very beginning, making the content that you want to see, because that will give you, You may not be getting external validation. You may not be getting the praise that you think you deserve, Mm -hmm. but you're making something that you personally enjoy. So I I agree 100%. And that's what kept me going initially. Sure, at times I was like, dang it, why am I not growing? This sucks. I hate it. Everybody goes through that, but you still have that little nugget of joy that you get. I just made something that I think is so cool. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the real shame is that You know, I want to I want to say, you know, if you gave up, it's because you're not a real creator. But that's not true. Like even really great creators who are making really great stuff get disappointed and walk away. Even if they, you know, some some people I think we'd be very, very upset if we knew how many people walked away and had they keep going a month later, they get seen by the right person or the right people. Um, I think that would all make us kind of sick. But uh that's to me my ruthless nature of like as as a content creator and a business person is like uh, quit (laughs) you know (laughs) more room for me right but (laughs) but uh i think that's i think it's the personal struggles that uh 
that carry you through the success in front of the rest of everybody else. Like the personal stuff that you go through for us, you know, it was a lot of really, really personal stuff. And like, I had like, uh, my, my parents died years ago and I had custody of my little brother when I started front page tech and, uh, had no business doing a YouTube channel, trying to support us like him and myself. I had no business doing that. Um, but, I think it's 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 the people to get through that stuff that can create all the way through the good stuff and appreciate the good stuff. Uh, and every creator goes through a dip because um, it's really easy to see success when you're starting from zero. It's it's easy to see results in anything when you start from zero. Like I used to weight weightlift a lot, and it was really easy to see initial results because you literally go from lifting nothing to something, and so you feel stronger within a week, and you get you get a really like supercharged result. And you're, you're feeling good, but then it plateaus. You get used to it. And um, I think it's that point where if you can get through that dip, uh, the people that come on the other side are always successful. The, the people that wait through that dip, even if it lasts you know, years, are the people that, that end up successful. Yeah, that, that's something that I always find interesting. So from the outside, you can look at a channel with 100,000 subscribers and think, oh my God, they are so successful. But you don't know if that creator is sitting there just in pure dread, in just misery, <laughs> thinking, yeah. oh my God, I only gained 2,000 subscribers this month when I was expecting yeah. five. It, it's The whole perspective changes when you start to see a certain, or when you start to expect a certain level of growth or a certain number of views. Yeah. And that's something that a lot of viewers don't really think about. They just see the big number and think, oh, they are the most successful person ever. They must be happy. But yeah, uh, yeah. There's a lot of self loathing that goes that, into being a content creator. <laughs> I think that just very recently, uh, my mindset has shifted. Like I stopped blaming the the algorithm i stopped blaming youtube and the viewer uh because i i was that person like we only gained a couple thousand subscribers this month what's wrong everybody else you know what i mean it's 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 been very recently where i was like no f this like i'm in control uh i know the right things to do and a lot of what's holding me back is just me being lazy or not being willing to do it not willing to put in the work we gained almost a quarter of our entire subscriber base this month because I would because Brian and I we had a talk and I, you and I you and I can either talk about that on air or off air. Um, Brian and I had a talk and we're just like, I I told him exactly what we needed to do. He told me exactly what he needed to do, what he thought we needed to do. We put our heads down and we honestly we called it our no life month. Mm-hmm. Brian was like, we're just going to know life it. And I was like, okay, cool. And we just agreed to put our heads down and do not look up until the end of this month. Do not even evaluate your situation until the end of this month. Just put your head down and do what you need to do. We, we made a game plan and we did not stray from that game plan. We made, we, we did exactly what we said we were going to do. And it looks crazy because it worked. Like we kind of expect, we expected it to work, but I did not expect you know, 20,000 subscribers this month. I expected better results than we had before, but I didn't expect some crazy theory and some crazy idea in my head to actually work. And it's literally based off of us just agreeing to play the game. Like, I think a lot of creators, like I, like I said before, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be like, I'm just going to create because I'm an artist. I'm not going to follow YouTube's rules. F the algorithm, just make stuff. That's great. Uh, but I have a selfish need to be seen, to make an impact, to make people laugh. Um, and so we just realized we needed to play the game. We knew the rules to the game. And, you know, the people that resist are the people that lose every time. You don't, you don't outsmart the algorithm. You don't accidentally make it. You, you, you play the game. And, I think playing the game right now is very vital and very important. So down the line, we can make a bigger impact with the stuff that we just want to make for fun. 
Um, we have a lot of plans. We always got it. We, we always got too far ahead of ourselves in our YouTube career. We always wanted, we, you know, at one point we launched an exclusive platform, like a website, not like Patreon, something that we coded ourselves and put so much money and time and effort into that when the audience wasn't ready. Um, there wasn't enough, there wasn't enough people watching for that to be rewarding for us and for us to get our, our, our time back and our money back. We were trying to do too much for too little. Uh, and I, I think part of our success right now is respecting the viewer. That's number one. Um, and respecting the algorithm, respecting the game. If we hadn't played, if we hadn't played to the rules, we would not be here. And I think part of the growth this month was just accepting what needed to happen and just do it, even if it was hard. My freaking God, what did I tell you guys? There is just so much useful information in that episode. I hope you all took notes because I did. And the lessons that I took out of this episode were make content that you enjoy and you want to watch. Don't make content just because it's a popular topic. If you want to be seen and succeed, you do have to pay attention to some of the numbers. You're only as good as your last video to most viewers. Do not rely solely on search for discoverability. Your actions following a successful video is really what matters. Use the content to set yourself up for success. Your mistakes and struggles carry you through your successes. And lastly, do not blame the algorithm or the viewer for your channel not growing. My God, nine lessons in a single episode. That is so insanely valuable. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you are still listening or watching, you are one of the awesome folks and I appreciate you so much. I would love to hear some feedback from you. You can send that to me over on Twitter at CreatorCasePod or you can contact me on my personal Twitter page at says. If you want to see the video version of this podcast, you can find all of them at creatorcasestudy.com and you can find all my other projects that I work on at bandrewscott.com. So if you are planning on coming back tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. But if not, I will see you on another time. Thank you guys so much for watching and listening. We'll see you later. Bye.